Welcome back to Tipsy Whiskey Shenanigans. I'm Steven, and today, tonight, whenever the heck you're watching this, we are getting into my favorite readily available barrel proof bourbons. Let's go. So, in order to be on this list, it needs to be a readily available barrel proof bourbon. Pretty freaking simple. I don't care about price. I don't care about what kind of proof. It could be an 80 proof barrel proof bourbon. I do not care. It has to be barrel proof and it needs to be readily available. There are a few that are honorable mentions because they're technically not that category, but I do think, you know, they should fit in this because they're high proof, readily available killers. And those two honorable mentions, Doc Swinson's, an old Forster, 1920. So both of these are phenomenal killers and they're honorable mentions because they're both 115 proof bourbons and they are not technically barrel proof. That's why they're not, you know, they're not actually on this list. They're just honorable mentions, but 1920 is old Forster's killer, killer of a high proof quality bourbon. It was probably the high proof bourbon that got me into high proof bourbons. 1920 is a freaking staple, brown foreman to the T, old forcer, that like nutty banana ice cream sundae I call it. It is that straight up down the middle and they do make barrel proof versions of them. They're just not readily available. I have one and it is a freaking monster. And then Doc Swenson's blender's cut. This is a new one for me, readily available, walked past it so many times just sitting there on the shelves until I found it at Costco for like literally dirt cheap, so cheap that I was like, well, it's high proof blended MGP. How could we go wrong? So I bought it and honestly, it freaking slaps. 115 proof, well done blended MGP. You've seen a lot of Doc Swinson's lately and there's a reason behind that because they have been killing it. And then to finally actually kick this list off, barrel proof bourbons that are readily available. And full disclosure, this is readily available to my area, so these might not actually be readily available in yours because I can only speak on you know the Arizona market. So if you don't live in Arizona and you're like, hey, I can't find these, it's you know, it's, it's, I'm speaking on behalf of my market, but I'm sure your market likely shares some bottles in commonality. So to kick it off, one that I'm honestly super surprised that is still readily available because it really shouldn't be because it's been discontinued, but I think it's a freaking monster. That's why I added it to this list. Bellmead Reserve. This is just like the Doc Swinson's killer blended MGP. Although I think this stuff is better than the blender's cut version of Doc Swinson's given it's like 65 bucks compared to like a 49.99 bottle. So, you know, prices do vary, but this is a monster of a blended MGP bottle. So they have moved this over to the Nelson Bros or Nelson Greenbrier. I don't know. Um, they, they have a new version of it. It has green labeling. It doesn't look as cool and shit like that. But this one was her old one, technically discontinued. That being said, still sits on the shelves in almost every single liquor store I've been to that previously had this. So I haven't seen it gone away. I don't know when it's gonna go away. That being said, if you like like five, six year old blended MGP at like, this is like 108.3 proof. So it's low proof, which is phenomenal because let's be honest, like 120 is 130, sometimes too much. 110s, great, great for just drinking and enjoying a bottle. So this is a great blended MGP, like five, six years old. That's just really enjoyable. Honestly, I put that in a blind with the whole 1920 and rare breed and that, I don't think it beat them, but it came really freaking close. And that's kind of like a hidden gem. Unfortunately, it has been discontinued, but it's still on the shelves in my area. So at least if you're in the Arizona market, get after that, get after that. This, you know, first one might not age well because, you know, maybe you're watching this like six months from now and, you know, it's no longer available. If so, I'm sorry, but I just thought I had to add that one. But getting into ones that are gonna be 100% available, 
in theory, if the bourbon craze doesn't make these impossible to find as well, with none other than one I just mentioned previously, Rare Breed. Rare Breed. Had me worried there for a sec. You had me on the freaking ropes, Rare Breed. I know, so during, I think, what, 2021 or 2022, there was a glass shortage. Rare Breed got a little hard to find. I got worried that we were going to lose Rare Breed as we knew it. Just kidding. It was just a glass shortage. We're all good. Rare Breed is back, baby, and it's back with vengeance. I mean, it's the same old good, just quality blended wild turkey product. I love the crap out of this. It's very, very sweet. Wild turkey is starting to get very sweet to me. Didn't always used to be there. It used to be more like a nutty cinnamon, but this stuff, I do get like this like cherry cinnamon nutty pie with like a whole boatload of vanilla, like custardy flavors. This is a great, great, phenomenal bottle. And again, it's like 55 bucks for a 116 proof wild turkey, especially in the market today where you find a lot of stuff for like 60 to 80 bucks. That seems to be like the realm for, you know, quality, higher proof bourbon. That's like kind of your gateway. It's nice to see something underneath that like realm that is what I would consider a high proof quality bourbon. But Rare Breed's always been a freaking dime like that. And then after that one, one that does fit in that gateway, and some of you may argue isn't actually bourbon, and I'm sure there's going to be someone in chat who also argues that, you know, it's not readily available, but if we're being honest, it's readily available here all the time in 750s and 375s. I'm sorry your market sucks, but JD, good old Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof. Like I said about the 1920 Old Forster, this stuff is like a little brighter of a brown foreman product, a little less like that nuttiness. And it, I feel like it gets more of like a brighter, not metallic -y, but a brighter version of the Old Forester brown foreman flavor profile. I don't know if that's like the charcoal filtering or whatever, but it seems brighter to me. Um, this stuff is phenomenal though. These things are like 65 in my area. Somehow they haven't really gone up in price. They started out in 65, like 50s, I mean, maybe not 50s. I think, I think they've always been like 60 in my area and now they're at like 65. I don't, like that is a steal, steal of a price. And all of these are all around, you know, like the 130-ish proof. This one's 133.1. Love the heck out of these. Love them. Love, 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 love. And I can get the 375s for like 35 bucks here which is just a great steal, especially if they're different proofs. So you want to get like a new one, but like you don't really need a full one and whatnot. And you just kind of want to like AB a few different JD single barrels together. It's nice to be able to get, you know, I'll get a little mini here. I'll get a little mini here. Love the heck out of these. I know, unfortunately, they're not always available for everyone else everywhere because I, I've made that shown up in a lot of videos. And I know a lot of people are like, hey, that's hard for me to find. I have a hard time finding that. I'm sorry, I'm, it, it sucks. But for me, they're readily available and this is my list, so I'm putting my favorites on it and I love the heck out of that bottle. That is like an easily findable, readily available monster. Like if I'm like, what's an easy to find monster bourbon? Jack Daniels, single barrel, barrel proof, Tennessee whiskey. I know it's classified Tennessee whiskey, I just, you know. We don't need to get into that argument. Up next after that one though, something that is actually legally classified as bourbon. And you've seen quite a bit recently as well, Maker's Mark 46 cask strength. Not the normal Maker's Mark, the cash strength. I don't know what it is, if we're being honest. I've recently kind of fallen in love with weeded bourbon, specifically Maker's Mark's stave finishing stuff. I know you've seen a lot of that kind of stuff. I just recently killed a non cash ring version of the 46. So I know we've been seeing a lot of these whole stave finishing things on the channel recently. And that's because I just, I love the heck out of them. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like the weeded flavor profile just takes on like whatever stave finishing they do really well. I just recently had the BRT02 or I, I don't know, one of the BRTs from 2022. 
a freaking monster. Love the heck out of these. But the reason I think, in theory, the reason I think I like the 46 is because it's a little bit of a spicier version of Maker's Mark. It's Maker's Mark at cast strength with a little bit of spice, a little bit of kick on it. And I think that comes from the French oak. I mean, I'm not super positive on this, but I think it has to do with the French oak adds a little bit more pizzazz and a little bit more of a like peppery type spice, or at least in theory, that's what French oak's supposed to add to it. And that's what I typically get because the maker's mark, just normal cash strength, I think is a little bland. It's a little dry. It's a little, not, not dry per se, but it's a little empty. It's a little just super vanilla custard with this weird weeded funk. And I think that like pepperiness from the actual you know, French oak staves kind of really balances that out. And then up next, the last one we have on this list is a Texas bourbon. I freaking love Texas bourbon. And it is incredible that this bottle is readily available in my area. Still Austin, Cash Drink, the musician, magician, mus the musician. Yeah, that's the word. The musician from Still Austin. This stuff is... 118, 118 proof, bad mamma jamma, cash strength, Texas bourbon. I absolutely love Texas bourbon. They do use a, like more of like a Kentucky style still. And because of that, they get kind of a Texas-y bourbon that tastes kind of like a Kentucky bourbon at the same time. So it honestly tastes like you blend a Texas bourbon, think like Balcones or iron root and you blend it with say like a you know wild turkey 101 or even like an mgp juice maybe you go to indiana and you just blend them together that's what it tastes like to me in theory i know it's a hundred percent texas bourbon i'm not trying to discount that i absolutely love it i love the whole craft aspect and all that jazz but what I'm saying is it doesn't really taste like your stereotypical Texas whiskey. And if you're a stereotypical bourbon drinker, I think this is a great one to kind of get you into Texas a little bit. And the nice thing is it's readily available $49.99 for 118 proof cash strength Texas bourbon. Yeah, it's a little youthy. It's from Texas. Get over it. It is phenomenal though, and a great value at $49.99. That is a wrap though. Please do me that favor, like, comment, and subscribe. Helps us out a ton, and we seriously appreciate the support. Leave a comment down below if you know you have a hard time finding any of these bottles in your area. You know, let me know down below. If you have one that I didn't bring up that you would have added, let me know down below. I'm sure there's things I overlooked. Like I'm not a huge fan of the 1792 foolproof or Knob Creek single barrels, but I do think those are fitting additions if you like those flavor profiles. Me, I'm kinda, uh, I'm, I'm very in between about that. It's mood dependent, but these all I think are like golden gems in all of their own sections, so. Also, check out the Facebook, Instagram, and the Patreon. The links for all that stuff are down there below. That is a wrap for today's video. Cheers, y'all. We'll see you later.